All right. Well, welcome to Kansas City Ballet's Dance Speaks, which we are doing in a virtual setting uh, today. Uh, we are talking about our new moves production for 2022, uh, which I'm super really excited about. Uh, oh, I am Devin Carney, Artistic Director of Kansas City Ballet. And uh, this new moves is very special to me. We have uh, a full female choreographic project going on, which I'm thrilled about. It's the first time for this company. And I'm honored to have with me right now, all six of the choreographers who are creating works for Kansas City Ballet. So maybe we could just go around um, right now and just introduce yourself. How's that? We'll start with Miss Stretta, Miss Emily Mistretta. Hello, I'm Emily Mistretta, as Devin just said, and um, I am choreographing uh, an all-female piece um, called Ladies' Lunch. Uh, yeah, and I'm a dancer with uh, Kansas City Ballet as well. That's great, and now I know what the title of your work is. I'll write that down right now. <laughs> um, and Caroline, maybe you could be next. Hi, I'm Caroline Dawn. Um, I'm also choreographing for this. I'm really excited about it. Um, my piece um, is called It Is What It Is, and it has eight people, three men, and five women. Cool. And Caroline, you're, you're, you're a choreographer here in Kansas City, um, and you've been doing that for a few years now, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, a graduate of UMKC, University of Missouri, Kansas City uh, Dance Department, which has put out some really yeah. wonderful individuals. So thank you for being yeah. with us. Um, Courtney. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Courtney Knitting. Um, I'm also choreographing amongst all these lovely ladies. And this is going to be my third work with Kansas City Ballet. It's a scientific based piece about uh, water titled H2O. Uh, that was actually supposed to be done in new moves of 2020. And now I finally get to put it on the stage now. So I'm super excited. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thank you, Courtney. Um, and Catlin, maybe you could go next. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Catlin Addison, and I'm a principal here at Ballet West, and I am as well um, choreographing a piece um, for Kansas City Ballet. Um, it's just a pas de deux, and it's called Sanctuary. And um, this is my second work outside of Ballet West. So I've created a few pieces with Ballet West, and then this is the second one I've created outside of my company. So I'm excited. Great, thank you. And Heather. I'm Heather Nichols. Um, I am a dancer with Kansas City Ballet and I'm choreographing a pas de deux as well. Um, and this is actually my first work on a professional company. So I'm really excited. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be choreographing on my fellow coworkers. It's really special. Great, thank you, Heather. And lastly, Marika. Hello, my name is Marika Brussel. Um, I normally live in San Francisco, but right now I am in Kansas City in the Kansas City Ballet Building. That's my shirt. <laughs> um, and I am delighted to be here. I, my piece is about time um, and how we perceive time um, in the past and the future. And it's called Already Infinite. Um, and I actually have a pretty big cast. I have eight men and four women. Um, so it's a rather quick process for a lot of people, a lot of dancers, but um, I'm really excited to work with all of them. They're really fantastic, every single one of them. Well, thanks, Marika. Um, so I, I wanted to just kind of talk a little bit with you guys about, you know, what, how you came to choreography. I think that's a very important part of this process is not only currently what you are actually doing, but what inspired you to become a choreographer. And I think I'm going to start with the newest choreographer amongst you, uh, which I'm so curious to find out from Heather, uh, this being her very first work, 
um, you have the fortune, Heather, of creating your first work on professional dancers, which not a lot of choreographers get that shot in their very first time uh, doing something. So like, what, what came over you to think you'd like to do something like this with your- Yeah, um, I am so fortunate to be choreographing on professional dancers. That has been an absolute dream. First of all, it's so nice to be able to work with people who can almost immediately take your corrections and just apply them and, and seeing that correction be taken is like incredible. Um, I actually uh, lost a, a friend of mine about a year ago, it's almost exactly a year ago actually. And um, after his passing, I kept seeing this at uh, the beginning of a piece in my head. And I, I just felt compelled to flesh it out. Um, I would see it maybe for a couple weeks and it was the beginning of the piece the same um, every time. So I just, I felt compelled to talk to Devin and, and ask if I could be part of New Moves um, for this season. So I'm so, so grateful that I was able to, to do that. These are two of my dancers. Uh, Liliana and Umberto, and I could not have asked for a better cast. They're incredible. It's so nice to kind of collaborate with professionals as well, because in my mind, I see my piece on me in a way, and then having it put on um, two dancers in a, in a different way, uh, it, it makes it grow. Yeah. And it's, it's incredible to like be able to see their aesthetic and the way that they take my choreography and make it their own. And it, it really elevates it. So I'm so happy with, with how it's I'm excited for everyone to see it. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Um, and congratulations for your courage, frankly, to you know stand up and say, I wanna choreograph. I wanna express this particular thing that's happened in my life. I think that's, you know, that's a very vulnerable place to be to, to put yourself out like that. So um, yeah, yeah. Congratulations to you, really you so joining joining the ranks of choreographers. So congrats. Thank you. Um, Marika, you know, um, one of the things about this particular experience that uh, we're having this year is that four of our choreographers are actually individuals who created works for Kansas City Ballet, right in the depths, and I mean the darkest depths of COVID, uh, when we actually had no real physical season in our uh, theater. Uh, what we did was we choreographed everything. Um, uh, I would contact uh, uh, arts institutions around the city of Kansas City and paired the arts institution up with a choreographer, and then a, a piece was created site specifically for that that venue. Um, and there, you know, there's a big difference choreographing um, in person as opposed to choreographing on Zoom, which was the case for Marika. Um, and this is your first time being able to choreograph. This would be officially your second work for Kansas City Ballet. Um, What's this experience been like for you uh, this time round? Because there was actually the uh, education manager for um, uh, coordinator for uh, Belger Arts uh, Crane Yard Studios, where that your work was filmed, was with us today in the audience that watched your your last few minutes of rehearsal, and um, it's you know, with the mask on, it was hard to tell that it was you. And she was like, she said, oh, that's Marika, wow. You know, but she said, oh, that's the choreographer that was on the iPad the whole time. And I was like, yep, that was the choreographer on a stick. Um, so <laughs> how's it been, uh, you know, to be able to do this the right way now? It's amazing. <laughs> I feel like, um, well, first of all, doing that piece at home, at home during the dark times was really like a bright light for me. So uh, even though I was um, I was in my attic, <laughs> um, it, gave, it gave me a reason to like 
wake up and and do something that was meaningful mm. to me. Um, being here is is really it's just wonderful to be able to see everybody and get to know them. I felt like I got to know people in a very limited way before, and it's important to me to feel like I connect with the dancers who I'm working with, and that we can have a conversation or a coffee or um, something meaningful between us. And that was really, it was difficult over Zoom. Um, and we were all so shocked with, with our lives at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And now I feel like there is more light around us. And I feel like we're connecting with that light in the studio and making um, a new kind of magic. I think we had talked the last time about how we were making trying to make magic from afar um but doing it in person is really yeah uh, you know it's a special experience yeah um i neglected to also ask you your origins of being a creative individual choreographically speaking what was it that turned that light on for you um i did come to choreography in a little bit of a roundabout way um oh look there i am um <laughs> But I, I always choreographed in my head whenever I heard music um, oh. from the time I was, you know, young. Um, and I was a ballet dancer, like all of us. Um, and when I was in my, I danced professionally when I was very young. And then I quit dancing and became a fiction writer um, because I was interested in stories. And when I came back to dancing, um, I danced, prof I quit, I came back, I danced professionally um, a little bit longer. And then I realized that I wanted to tell my stories uh, through ballet, um, through that vocabulary. And I realized that the process for me is really similar, whether I'm writing a story or telling a story or choreographing a ballet, um, that I like to sort of uh, make a sketch and feel like I could get it all out so I don't have to worry. Like I did the ending mm. first for this piece. Oh. Um, and then go back and and flesh it out and, and put, put the details in later, even though I start with the meaning, but I, I do start with the story. The story is, is, I think the most important thing for me. That's really interesting that you're a storyteller at heart and have been for quite a while. <laughs> That's cool. Um, um, Caroline, I was wondering about, you know, you're, I've had the great opportunities to watch you as a dancer while you were with UMKC and and observe the way you move um, and we've had many conversations about you know choreography and the thought of being a choreographer um, I mean I would say that you're establishing yourself pretty pretty well as a choreographer now but you were a, a were you still are an incredible mover and very much um, intense and very in the ground and very connected to the world, you know, around you. Um, it's one thing, it's just like what Heather was saying. I, I see things, I see me dancing, right? But you're a great mover, but transferring that information to other individuals is an incredible talent, which all six of you are in, different phases of doing um, in your, your choreographic lives. Um, how did you decide, I'm gonna be a choreographer and how is it that you were able to start creating works that channel your movement quality in such an interesting way? Um, well, I definitely have always um, enjoyed putting steps together, um, especially in college. My degree is BFA in um, performance and choreography. So we did study choreography for the entire four years and had to, um, you know, create a lot of work in college. Um, and then I just kind of wanted to focus on like my dancing after college and just understand, you know, like when you're in college for dance or like really anywhere where you're in like a bubble, you kind of are in that bubble and it's hard to find out who you are sometimes and like what you wanna say as an artist. Um, and so I did like a lot of self-study and uh, trained a lot in Gaga and would go and, and I still do um, train in Gaga um, and travel for that. Um, and I think 
understanding sensations of the body for me um, has really helped me create a movement language, um, especially still using my past knowledge of, um, you know, tech, oh, hello, technique. And, um, you know, I, I grew up doing a lot of ballet. I mean, I was like a bun head, um, which is so funny now. Um, but I, I mean, I was like a full on bun head. And so I'm trying to incorporate that with a lot of like a mixture of different things that just feel me. I bring like, I feel like a lot of, of human experience and like things that people deal with on like an everyday basis to my movement quality. And so the dancers can relate to it as well. Mm -hmm. um, luckily I have literally the best cast literally ever and um, who just like are great to collaborate with. Um, you know, we, there's a lot of discussion of like, I, I do the movement and they see it and they do it and it's amazing. And it's like, well, how does that feel for you? Like, where do you want to take it? So it's a lot of like, I'm trying to listen to them and like bring their movement style. I'm trying to bring out their individuality as artists. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I just go up, just can't tag on to that last thing you talked about, which um, I observed in my 40 whatever years, maybe more, of being in this profession, how as a dancer, choreography has changed quite a lot in how, how something is choreographed on you. Um, and that word collaborate is something that has come along way more recently. Um, and I've noticed that a lot. That, and I think that it's a, a really wonderful thing that, oh my goodness, my phone, shush. Um, that, there, that there's now this openness between art, you know, choreographic artist and dancer artist and that mutual understanding that together we can make something really interesting. And that there's a good, there's a voice within every single dancer in the room. And the talent of the choreographer is being able to discover yeah. that openness and create that open environment, uh, which uh, I, I think is a, a, a beautiful thing that dancers now have an opportunity to work under that sort of idea and that sort of concept. So kudos to you. Um, Courtney, um, you know, you, this is your, you said your third work, right? And we were supposed to do this work of yours. Uh, I still have the schedule of the day we canceled uh, and went, we all went home and it was literally the week before we were supposed to perform your work uh, in New Moves 2020, which of course never occurred. Um, and, you know, you're, You've been choreographing for a while. I know you were choreographing on your fellow students at SAB, um, let alone when you got to Kansas City Ballet. But this is a really interesting experience for you, which we I think we actually talked about earlier today, that this is a work that pretty much was performance ready two years ago. And here we are now, you have a chance to return to the, this work and, uh, are you duplicating it? Are you refining it? Are you completely changing it? How, how are you going about it this time around? It's funny though, we were talking about this in the studio today. Today, the 16th of March, it literally was the last day that we ever did this piece um, or that the piece that I'm doing was You're the right. last day ever. Two years ago. So um, yeah, so wow. it's really funny that we're talking about it like today because it's really to the day. Um, wow. For the most part, what's funny about the work is it was very much ready to be performed on stage. And the only recollection that I had of the piece is either in my notebook, which I brought, because um, I write everything down. Uh, that's the only way I really feel like I know it in my head is if I actually write everything down. Um, and one video from rehearsal uh, of, the last week. So 
trying to see it off the tiny little GoPro and get all the details and things has, has been different, but definitely really exciting um, because I don't really remember fully everything that I did. So it gives me a chance to now explore new things, um, which has been super exciting. And also it was two years ago. So the dancers that I'm working with, and luckily I got the same cast um, of dancers that I originally had uh, for the piece. Um, you know, they've had two years to grow and gain strength and, you know, work on this and, and all, and just grow as artists and people. Um, so now they bring a different quality to the work, which when I've made changes, I'm like, oh, well, we used to do it like this, but I like this better now because it suits who you are now. So it's really, I think, kind of like you talked about, I'm trying to do my best to just listen to what they're saying um, because it, some of it's actually really in their body. They still remembered a lot of it, which made me feel good, um, <laughs> but they still like, hopefully like the piece and like the movement quality, but um, that I keep it fresh and I keep it now. So it's not like I'm just putting, you know, paint on an already done painting. I'm trying to make a new painting out of something that's already done, you know? So, huh. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really great to finally see your work. Um, it's been a quite the challenge just to I'm find the place to finally get it back out there. And I'm so thrilled it's on the first new moves that we do live. Yay, um, I'm so excited. Uh, yeah. Um, Catlin, uh, zooming in from, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, you know, you're an established performing artist. You know, you're at the top of your field there with Ballet West. What, at what point did you say, you know what, I want to choreograph? What, what happened to bring that on? Was it, you know, was it like Marika who danced to music ever since she was a little kid? And what happened? What, what, when did the light switch go on for you? Well, honestly, I, I relate I used to, with Marika. I used to dance around my house all the time as a child. So I would always be, I guess, choreographing in my home as a, a little kid dancing around. Um, but become, deciding to want to choreograph on my peers or be a choreographer was actually um, one of the ballet mistress at the time recommended that I just submit a proposal to Ballet West to, um, and I, I don't know why, but she just, you know, she had a relationship with me and she was like, you know, Kat, I think you have something to say um, through your movement quality. And um, wow, mm -hmm. it's sort of nice to watch them. I haven't seen, I've been watching them rehearsing with the dancers on Zoom. Um, right. And it's sort of interesting to watch them on as we're talking. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so she recommended that I submit a proposal for Ballet West, um, Bear and Ballet that they would have in August. And um, I submitted a proposal of wanting to create a, I think it was a 10 minute piece with 12 dancers. I don't know what I was thinking, but I was like, I'm gonna take a bunch of dancers and I'm just gonna, choreograph something to the the beat of our heart and I was taking the simplest thing like a heartbeat and I, and um I also was like okay what sounds like a heartbeat um and then to me I always like to connect things to my culture so I was like okay the African drums so I had those two things and I was like I'm gonna create a piece with 12 dancers um to African drums. And from there, I just cool. was able to build and I ended up having a live drummer on stage. And um, what I've found as a choreographer, I like to um, amplify people of uh, composers of color too. And it's sort of my way of um, learning a little bit about um, composers of color and then also, and also amplify their voice through my movement or through my exposure that I get of opportunities of choreographing like here. Um, so uh, I'm honestly still trying to figure out my voice as a choreographer, but I adore the simplest movement. Um, and I, when you see my ballet, it's I try to keep it really simplistic and allow there to be an emotion and a feeling that is driven throughout the whole piece. So um, 
yeah, I'm just exploring that. And that is what um, pushes me to want to create, I guess I, I'll take a strong emotion that I have personally, and I try mm -hmm. to um, express that or I try to use that uh, to help me create a piece. And then, you know, it, Kansas City, the dancers are, they are beautiful. And it's been so easy. You know, from the moment I walked in the door, they've been so easy to collaborate with that um, the first two days we were able to get, you know, eight minutes done um, right away. How, yeah, I couldn't believe how fast that process happened for you. So, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. yeah, so it's, you know, I'm still exploring, still finding my voice. And um, I just allow my emotion in the simplest movements to help move the piece. Yeah. Help create the piece um i have to say and I, I it's it is i don't i i doubt there maybe i don't know i've never heard a choreographer say yeah i know exactly what my voice is i think we're all constantly looking for another way to express an emotion or a different way or a more interesting way it doesn't mean to say that the way you did it before was not interesting. It's just another unique um, facet of, of yeah. your voice. Yeah. So yeah. keep up the, the adventure, the, the travel the journey. Yeah. 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 Um, Emily, you know, uh, shoot, how many have you done for Kansas City Ballet now since that first trio? It's four or are we at five now? I think we're at more than. I think this is my seventh piece, but I did one piece on the moving arts project and one on the school. Uh, so so that's, yeah. that'll, that'll make you seven then. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, it's been really exciting to watch your voice, um, explore your voice. We were just talking about that with Catelyn, yeah. uh, you know, and it's been really quite exciting to watch how your voice has changed over the years um, and how it's matured and developed. And uh, I, I love that about your work. You're always trying to go a little bit further and try something a little bit different and be a little bit more adventurous. Uh, but, you know, that first year when I asked you if you were interested in choreographing, because um, I'm going to put a little history out there. Sorry um, uh, about you. Um, you know, you used to dance with Boston Ballet and you were a part of, and you are to this day, still a part of what's called the Surreo Collective, which is a group of dancers, a very close group of friends who uh, were with Boston Ballet. Not all of them are, are there anymore, but still you're together. And I think that's really wonderful. Um, and I'd seen some of your work uh, performance work via video that you guys had done. So I knew you had it in you to be experimental through this Surreo Collective. Yeah. But, you know, when I asked you to do that first work, you seemed pretty ready to go for it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was really excited about that. You're like, okay, let's do it. Um, do you still feel that, that excitement about creating a new work? Is that still like yeah. anxiousness, like, oh, how are we going to do this? Yeah, I feel like I go through the same phases now every time. Like I find myself going through uh, like the excitement and I can't wait to get in there to the studio and then to like the, oh no, like what am I going to do next? <laughs> and it kind of, it kind of loops like that. And then I get re-excited and then uh, I talk about it with somebody and a new idea forms. And so it's an interesting process. And happens a little different each time but mm. I feel myself going through those same those same steps I'd say um but yeah I think when you asked originally it was like it was time I've been dancing around the idea for a long time and mm. so I think um finally I was ready to just go for it <laughs> and try some different stuff <laughs> it's, it's funny uh, footage right now and that's you yeah <laughs> Um, well, while we're on you and, and, and your, um, your work is being shown right here, the music, um, could you talk a little bit about the musical choice? Because this is another part of you that's adventurous and you're using music that's, I, I wouldn't really 
quite expect. And I, I think it's really interesting that the, it's a lot more upbeat, uh, yeah. some of this music. So where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary upbeat sometimes. <laughs> it's scary upbeat. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it stemmed from ladies. Like I wanted it to be an all female piece because again, like you said, I, I want to try something new. So even if it's maybe like a step in the wrong direction, it's still information learned. Um, so I think to have it be just women was a challenge right off the bat. And then that kind of guided the musical choices. Um, I have this kind of this woman singing, she's kind of got a French vibe and, and then I have, it goes very upbeat because then I, I was thinking about wanting um, the females to be able to be a little bit more rhythmical and a little bit more full body. And I think as a female ballet dancer, we tend to, we have the more lyrical moments and the men have the more bravado moments. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to kind of give the women a chance to have that, but still in a very feminine way. It's very like feminine movements. And we just, we're, we're really, you know, we're just in our, in our female forms and in our bodies. And usually I do this movement on men and the men are like, I'm gonna, not going to do it quite like you did it just now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun to kind of play with the feminine aspect of it. Yeah. Um, and so that got me to my last piece of music that's uh, female vocals. It has a strong beat, which again, for me, it's a little scary because I don't want it to feel too much just like you could just be with your friends in, in a club. But that's also kind of a fun aspect because it's it's yeah. upbeat and it's lighthearted. Um, so I kind of I was very on the fence, but I was sticking with it. And I think it's going to be it's they're all very different genres, but I, I think I find a way to tie them together. Um, but yeah, adventurous. I, I'd say this piece is a little unusual. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you actually. Uh, you're in your own work. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious, you're the only work on the entire program where you were actually choreographed, choreographing and performing your own work. Um, what's that like to choreograph on yourself, kind of, you know, when you think about it's, it? Um, it's so hard. <laughs> it's so hard, I'd say. And I, I think that I found I've never been in my own piece. Um, I was actually accidentally <laughs> once because... Uh, there was a concussion that happened and so I had to jump in um but I um yeah I it's it's complicated because you are you're not able to constantly see how it's developing so you're having to con jump back and forth um and it is weird watching the playback when I finally do get a video of myself to see myself in it like it mm. seems like it's a bit wrong for me um but it, it's it's another challenge to 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 try um and i think it's good for me as a choreographer to feel how my work feels and experience mm. um, sure how it translates yeah see how much i should put on the dancer or how much they should bring out because again in that spirit of collaboration that's one of my favorite things to do as a dancer is to collaborate um but then there's like this step i mean i don't know if the other women here feel it where how much of yourself are you how much do you do you try and have a dancer grow to to meet what you're asking them and how much do you have them you you have them bring them themselves into the work but is there like a limit or do you kind of just stand stand back and let them interpret it um because i've worked with people where you know it's very specific they really want you to do it the way that they want but they you can still do it in your way. So I think I'm still trying to discover that, how much of myself to, to push on the dancers and how much, where's that balance kind of. That's, that's actually a, a great topic that we should, uh, let's explore that a little bit with the other choreographers. I, I think that's a very interesting idea. Um, maybe Catlin, you know, you, you're, you're right in the depths of, you know, you are, in your dance career, right, Catlin? And you know, you're working with three wonderful couples uh, that you're doing the work for. Um, same question um, I pose to you is exactly what 
Emily was just talking about. How much of yourself are you looking for in what you are creating? Or Honestly, I like the dancers to take it on and make it their own. As an artist, like I love when a choreographer feels that comfortable with me that they can just allow me to make it my own, make it personal. Yeah. So many times I actually do, I, I, I am very impressed, Amanda, that you're able to be in your work because I don't like to be in it. I like it to be like, not mine. You know, I like to collaborate with the artists and then give it to them and say, you make it your own and allow me to guide you along the journey of the piece of whatever it's going to be. And, um, and I trust you. Um, yeah. And I, I feel like there's a lot of beauty in just trusting the artist to understand and can visualize exactly what I'm showing them because I do get up and dance and I do move around as I'm creating. But many times I'll, I'll do one step and then a dancer will do it a little bit differently. And I love it. Or when they fall out of something or muck up something, I, I love that. And then I make it that. Um, and actually with working with three different couples in the beginning, I didn't want them to be similar. And they would say, well, one person's doing this on this count and the other person's doing this on this count. I would say, well, what feels good and organic for you and that couple? Right, right. Um, and uh, to honor that, to honor what you personally feel is, is right and um, organic. And um, yeah, so I like the dancers to take the freedom and the initiative to just take it on themselves and make it their own. Yeah. Um, I, I will say though, when you came to <laughs> Kansas City Ballet in November to create your work, you were certainly demonstrating quite beautifully what you were hoping for the dancers. <laughs> Everybody kept going, wow. <laughs> oh, thank, really, you, thank you. Yeah, but they were so, they're so, they're so good. Like yeah. Devin, you have a great company and such beautiful artists that actually, I think it was after class. I was like, could I change? And could I use everybody? <laughs> <laughs> so it's also really hard to like pick dancers too and for me it was like their warm smile in their eyes um in the profile picture that's how I picked the dancers I was like their eyes and their warm smile even though everyone has a warm smile in the company they're all they have a great smile but that's how I selected the six by their eyes and their smile cool. hmm? oh that's cool um Marika you know i I want to kind of ask you this same question. I mean, you have been choreographing for how many years? I don't even know. How many years have you been sincerely choreographing? Since Seven. you were a little kid? Well, I don't count that. <laughs> okay, all right. Sincerely, I would say about seven years. Seven years. Yeah. Yeah. And um, would you say that you're, when, when you're asking a dancer to, to replicate your work or are, are, do you fall on the side of, I need it to be like this? Cause you're a very, very, very prepared person. Um, just so everybody knows this here. Uh, she's just kind of like Courtney. Courtney's extremely prepared. Like you've got it all ready to go um, to, to a certain degree, of course. Um, do, you, do you say, this is the step on this count. And then this is the step on this count. Or do you give that a little more room for, as Catlin said, when somebody mucks it up, you know, it's like, hey, I like that. Let's go with that. Yeah, I would say that I um, tend to be uh, much more like the way Catlin was talking about, where I really want the dancers to take it um, and make it their own and really internalize the movement. Um, this piece is a little, more specific parts of it because they're supposed to be, they have to be together at certain parts. But during the creation process, um, I really try to have this, this, the intent, the story, mm. um, be open enough that the dancers can put their own story in it. Like my story doesn't have to be their story. Um, whatever, and then, and the movement too, like 
from one movement to the next, like what, where does it feel like you want to go with that? Like I may have an idea, but their idea is, is very often better <laughs> than, than my original idea. Um, and then, and then way, the way we can collaborate, I feel like these, your dancers, like I agree, are so wonderful to work with. Um, so easy and open and mm. um, wanting to use the ideas and make movement from it. Um, so I would say, yeah, I don't, I, I hope I don't come in and sort of, I mean, not that it's bad to do that, but my intention is not to do that. My intention is is to be open and collaborative. Cool. Yeah. yeah but it's really good to be prepared, right? Well, it just really helps <laughs> me with, with my personal anxiety <laughs> to be prepared. I totally relate. Yeah. I Even if I don't use it, I just like know it's there. Right. Exactly. I think yeah. that's a that's a really good way to think about it. I like that. Um, Courtney, speaking of being prepared. Um, you know, you, you, uh, <laughs> this, this work that, yes, it's now two years old in a way, but it's new, you know, um, when you first came to it, were you quite prepared for it or was it just mainly just the music and here's my concept. I'm doing something scientific about H2O. Maybe, you know what, before I, I just asked a question, which I don't think anybody knows why I said that. Maybe you could explain your work a little sure. bit more deeply. <laughs> I'd love to. So my work is titled H2O, H2O meaning two hydrogen molecules and one oxygen molecule, which eventually becomes water. My piece is totally based on the scientific patterning of how those molecules actually bond and come together. So water itself in the scientific form of H2O has a really big story to it in general, which meant I had to do a lot of research as a scientist, which was very helpful because my dad happens to sell water purification systems for a living. So I got to talk with him a lot and just sit down and learn about how do they bond? How do they come together? When they come together, do they separate? Are they, you know, energetic and frantic or, uh, you know, do they go in swirling motions and things like that? So really everything in my piece has a meaning and a specific to it. So I think that's where, especially for work like this, I do have to be very prepared because the arm movements that they're doing, the patterning that it is, it's not just, well, maybe you can run here. It was, this hydrogen molecule and this molecule made this pattern to create water. And that's mm -hmm. what we're gonna do. So mine, I think in that sense, creating this specific work was, I definitely need to be prepared in the essence of what I'm doing and the reasoning behind it, because I don't, because I'm you know approaching it in the sense of it's a scientific, work it's h2o i want it to read that way i want it to be truthful i want it to be genuine i don't want it to uh there's certain movements in my ballet where they're super sharp because those are the angles that the molecules if you look it up actually make where then there's other motions where it's just water and wave where it's a little more interpretive so that's i think where for me um i come in with a plan and i have you know steps and i have music but then how that dancer is going to execute this step, I usually leave it up to them. To them. Um, we actually kind of had that happen today in rehearsal, which was really cool because sometimes you have a vision of what the step is going to look like in your head. And then kind of like Catelyn was saying, then they do something else where like a dancer messes up, but it wasn't on purpose, but then you like it better than what you had in mind. So I actually had a lot of that happen. Um, with some of the non-structure things based within this work where maybe a dancer gave more shoulder or a different head or things. And I was like, oh my God, yes, that's great. Don't do what I was saying, do that, you know? So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's kind of a, my, for me, it's a, it's a give and take. I like to be prepared and give them a sketch, but that sketch can be, you know, sure. changed. Yeah. 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 Um, Heather, um, you know, being your first, your very, very first, I, I just think it's so cool. I love it when somebody's, it's their first time choreographing. Um, we are all behind you, Heather. It's like, yes, go Heather. Um, I, I did not know about this experience you had by losing a friend a year ago. And I'm really sorry to hear that, by the way, um, that that 
had that, that happened. Um, and I think it's really beautiful that you're communicating that experience now to hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. You know, I think that's a really sensitive and lovely thing to do. Um, did you, are you just experimenting along the way or did you really come into it with, here are the phrases of choreography that I wanna do? Um, I think in the beginning, because I really saw the beginning of the piece so many times in my mind, that was pretty clear what I wanted to do um, and like how I wanted that to begin. And then I sort of had that in my head before I even had music. Mm. So I, I had to find a piece of music that I felt was conducive to that movement. And then once I picked that piece of music, cause I had maybe four pieces that I was thinking about using. Um, and once I picked that piece of music, then I fleshed out the beginning. I had maybe about a minute and a half. And then from there I would go home and say, okay, let's figure out, you know, Heather, the next 30 seconds, or where do you want the piece to go from there? Right. Um, and it kind of developed from there. And like the other choreographers are saying, it is a collaboration in, in a big way, but I know that I find myself wanting very specific things on very specific timing. And that's something that we kind of find together in rehearsals. Mm -hmm. um, I will hear certain notes and I'm like, okay, that needs to happen then. But then in between there, the dancer kind of finds their own timing or their own quality with the movement. Um, and I think that that's, that's really special. Yeah. And I don't know that the piece is necessarily, I, I feel it, it was, planted in my mind um, after my friend's passing and it's kind of morphed into not necessarily about him. I do feel that he was, um, hit this event was a big catalyst in me creating work. Um, it kind of just now has become part of like uh, the, the name of the piece is called Mayreki, which is actually a Greek word. And it means putting a piece of your soul into something that you create or something that you uh, do. Okay. So I, I feel like it's, it's kind of, it's morphed along more along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely the catalyst for me, even seeing any of this choreography to begin with was, yeah, that, that yeah. event. But, um, okay. Well, thank but you. yeah, it's been, it's been so cool to collaborate in many ways and, and find that I'm specific on certain things and pretty fluid with others. Yeah. 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 That's a good point. Sometimes yeah. that, that is the case. There's something that you're really married to and you really yeah. want that, but what's in front of it or behind it. Ah, exactly. Can... Yeah. I'll work on like a tiny little moment for like 15 minutes, just trying to get it perfect right. how I see it in my head and then other parts I'm like oh I didn't even notice that you were doing that because that kind of is yeah. up to you yeah yeah okay. um Caroline I, I wanted to ask you because we're we're like getting down to the time here um you're doing something very unique um as is everybody on the program uh but you're 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 bringing in um as Catlin is, and Catlin, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. Um, that we, Catlin has a, a a live pianist. Our our music director Ramona Pansagrau is going to play um, a, a original a composition uh, by a friend of Catlin's, or someone she knows. Um, but Caroline, yours is being you your music kind of goes in three very different directions. There are three very specific areas. Um, but one of them is with one of our dancers who is actually in the work, Cameron Thomas, who is, is going to play on the piano while Zachary Borso, um, as it's described in the program notes, spoken word occurs. Uh, maybe you could explain all that a little bit <laughs> oh man um yeah 
I mean, I feel like I'm very much inspired by different phrases of wording. And I feel like the past two years, um, the phrase, it is what it is, has been a phrase that we've heard. Um, and my piece has to do with expectations um, and just like having expectations of yourself, having expectations of other people, people having expectations of you and just like meeting those expectations. And it's, uh, I think over the past few years, it's been hard to meet like goals or expectations because everything has just turned so differently for everyone. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, bringing in that human aspect to the piece and, you know, I think as artists, there's so much depth to what we have to like, say like as dancers and I think um I really try and bring that human form like who you are as a dancer and who you are as a human being in my opinion should be the same person and I think that like if you you should not step into the studio and turn on this like random thing um and I spend a lot of time like thinking about that and so like you know, how are you able to bring yourself into the space? So with Cameron and Zach, they both have these incredible talents um, that I knew about previously. And I wanted to bring that into this space. I'm not, I don't want to say too much about it because it is so, <laughs> it's a lot. Like, I mean, I go from like classical music to a lot of things, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if it'll work, but I want to do it. So we'll see if it happens and I'll run with it. Um, oh. But <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, I just, I was really just trying to tap into Cameron and Zach's human expression of artistry on top of their beautiful mu movement quality um, along with my concepts and all of that. So it'll be interesting. Well, I, I got to say, I think it's really adventurous to, you know, to bring two people who don't necessarily use these talents on a regular basis, but they do have them. So yeah. I think that's really cool that you're doing that. And I think it's encouraging to the, to them as well, because it gives mm -hmm. them a chance to express themselves in a different way, another art form within their art form, which I think is really exciting. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 And I think it's going to be more than what it is. I think it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> um, so we got a few seconds here left. Um, I, I did want to ask you guys, you know, there have been some really amazing female choreographers in the past, um, and uh, not enough of them, I have to say that for sure. But, you know, there's the, we are all inspired by someone in our past, you know, uh, we all live in the present because of what's happened in the past. Um, so, you know, as, as choreographers, you know, who are your inspirations from, from the past and or present who are creating now? Um, you know, we can go way back and there's like Isadora Duncan and there's Martha Graham, Pina Bausch, oh my goodness, amazing, Pina Bausch. And a little bit more current is maybe Twyla Tharp or uh, Lucinda Childs. Um, and then you get into really current with like Kathy Marston um, and Annabella Pozzochoa, Helen Pickett, Crystal Pite. Um, you know, these are all wonderful artists from different generations. Um, so for all of you, maybe you could just, we could just go around one or two names of people who have inspired you along the way as a female choreographer. Carolyn, you're, you're on right now. So why don't you go? Um, I think uh, I'm really inspired by male choreographers. Um, I'd have worked with a lot of females that are, are amazing, um, but Gary Abbott, who is my mentor, um, who is choreographed for New Moves. Right. Um, he 
he really, really has inspired my way of thinking about choreography um, immensely, immensely. Yeah, and there's the, the piece that they did. Um, Gary Abbott was my professor in college, and then I also danced in his company, Deeply Rooted. Um, so just like being around him for so long and just mm-hmm. seeing his methods and his storytelling, I think has really, really, really inspired me a lot. Great. So, yeah. And I did love that work. And I think, Courtney, you were in that work, if I'm not correct, right? I was. That was an unbelievable experience to be in that work. Yes. So I, in Second Caroline, he's an amazing choreographer, an amazing person. Amazing person. And that's what Caroline was saying about why should you go in the room and be somebody different, you know, be yourself when you're there. I think that's cool. It's a great testament to that. Um, Marika, who inspires you? Who inspires you? Um, Okay, well, I am very inspired by writers, um, but in terms of choreographers, I would say currently, I'm, I'm very inspired by Helen Pickett. Um, just the way she is a mentor of mine too and um, we talked about like how do you walk in the room as a female choreographer the first day when you don't know anybody yeah Um, and she's she's just very open and helpful I love her work and she puts herself in her work Um, and that that is very inspirational to me in terms of being comfortable with yourself in the room Um, I love Kathy Marston's work um, because she works with stories um I think she's, I just saw Mrs. Robinson in San Francisco, which was oh, great. I thought it was great. Um, and then my, one, of, one of my most inspiring um, choreographers is Kurt Joss. Um, the Green Table is just like, changed, it just rocked my world. Yeah. 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 All right, great. Um, Emily, Ms. Tretta. Um, I'd say, um, I think kind of like Caroline, uh, Yuri Killian was a huge impact on me doing dancing his work, um, working with people that work closely with him. Um, It's definitely was, it was massive for the way that I think about movement and being organic um, and being human. I think he has so many human moments in his choreography that that's something I've really brought to my own dancing and to my choreography. Um, Hans Ben Manen, uh, Pina Bausch. I remember seeing her documentary and being blown away. Yeah. Um, but I think also I worked with a woman, Summer Lee Radigan, who was originally with Lines and Royal before that. Um, and she kind of opened my mind to the way that I could move. And I was a young student and I had been doing ballet so strict. Um, and she kind of brought a new, a whole new circumference to the space and body for me so she was she was good for that as well she was huge for that but. thank you thank <laughs> you um Catelyn, um i'm very curious who's who's the person who's really inspiring you out there um well right now um i'm reading twyla tharp's books mm. um, not right now, for the past few years, I've been reading her books and Twyla Tharp has inspired me um, and how taking simple movements and making them into a a piece or a step. Um, Also, um, Christopher Bruce, I really like his work too. Mm -hmm. One of his ballets, Grinning in Your Face is one of my favorite. Um, But a lot of times my inspiration comes from the composer they're what I would like to know what inspires them and what made them create a piece of music. And from that, that's what um, drives me to create. So it's the composer. Cool, thank you. Um, Heather, who's who's, who's like (laughs) with our one minute left, um, I gotta get to you and Courtney, who is is the one that's inspiring you? Yeah, um, I really love uh, Ma Kong's work. Actually, I oh. seeing his stuff a lot in Richmond Ballet and Jessica Lang. They did a lot of both of those. Jessica Lang has an incredible movement quality, mm-hmm. and I love um, Juliano Nunez as well. Um, the way that it's so fluid and circular, it, it is incredible, and I oh. love it. <laughs> All right, and lastly, Miss Courtney. Um, 
I actually agree with Marika Brussel. The one of the reasons I actually really started choreographing besides on students at SAB was because of Helen Pickett. She was on a panel doing a discussion when I was in the second company at Pennsylvania Ballet. And I raised my hand and I said, um, so how did how do you start choreographing? Like where, like I would I'm interested in it, but like where do you start when you're like mm. really doing a work? Yeah. And she looked at me and she goes, You just start. There it so, is. So <laughs> um, you know, that was that was huge to me. Um, but actually, I'm gonna say something else since uh this is my fourth season with Kansas City Ballet, and a female choreographer that actually really inspires me is Caroline on our beautiful panel here. Thanks. Her movement quality is just so different from what I've personally ever seen or ever experienced. And I'm lucky enough, I'm not in her work, but I'm lucky enough, and I told her this the day one, I just wanted to listen to what she had to say in the studio, mm. because sometimes it's not even about how you're doing the movement, it's what you're thinking about while you're doing it. And oh. even though I'm not in the work, I feel like I've learned so much from just being in there, listening to her, seeing her work and, she has such a different kind of energy in the studio and it's been really cool to um, to just be in there and, and learn and, and grow that way. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Courtney. That's really, that's really cool. Thank you. And what a lovely way to conclude our dance speaks for this new move. Um, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for uh, giving your time up tonight. I know you all had long days of choreography today and, and rehearsals of your own as well as dancers some of you and um, really appreciate you giving your time for this tonight i know that um, so many of the viewers have now learned a lot more about what this particular new moves production is going to be like and uh, hopefully they will all come and see your beautiful works on our stage here at the todd Bolander center for dance and creativity so thank you all for being with us and have a Fabulous night. I really appreciate it. Thank you. See you later. Thanks. <laughs>